remembered the gavel. Welcome to the March 4th, 2013 meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party. No, my mic's not on. Welcome. Can you hear me now? No. Can you hear me now? Yes or no? You can. Okay, well, I want to make it easy for when the chief is talking. What do you think, chief? If you just stand right here, is that going to be okay? You, you need the podium. Can you hear me? Is it okay? And can you hear me now? <laughs> Just shout. All right, welcome to the uh, March 4th, 2013 meeting of the Lawrence County Democratic Party. Um, if you would please join me in uh, rising in a moment of silence to honor those who serve our country. Uh, we are always on the cusp of something or other, and men and women around the world um, serve us, so thank you. And the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, when you came in, uh, there was a sign-in sheet, so I hope that you signed in when you came in. Um, there were also the minutes from the January and February meetings. Uh, you can see that our Secretary Jarrell is here and healthy this month. Thank you very much, Jarrell. Um, if you've had a moment to read over those minutes, I would accept a motion to approve them. Do I hear a second? All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim Parker, do you have a financial report for us? <laughs> uh, not quite yet. Okay, we'll, we'll skip that for now. We'll come back. Uh, we have been having a really great uh, speaker series here the last year and a half or so, and mm -hmm. we've been learning a lot about uh, different parts of how the government works. And I'm really pleased to have with us um, Chief Guyton from the Lowndes County Fire Department to tell us uh, what the fire department does, how it's organized, things that we might not know. We learned a lot about the health department uh, last month, and I'm positive, 100% positive, we're going to learn stuff about the fire department that we didn't know. Chief Guyton. Good evening, and thank you. It's an honor to be invited here to speak tonight to your group. Last month, I ran into Gretchen at commission meeting, and Gretchen asked me if I'd be able to speak here tonight. So I asked her, I said, well, Gretchen, what do you want me to talk about? And she said, well, just talk about the fire department. And I thought, well, that's certainly something I know a little bit about. So I, I readily agreed to come here and speak with you. Just as very quickly, I would like to introduce myself just a little bit. Uh, I'm Chief Richard Guyton, Lowndes County Fire Rescue. Uh, I've been with the fire service now for 36 years. I began my career with Birmingham Fire and Rescue Service in Birmingham, Alabama, and I retired the first time from the City of Bessemer Fire Department as a battalion chief. I also worked for 20 years at the Alabama Fire College where I served as an instructor and the curriculum coordinator. I have a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Alabama and a second Bachelor's degree from Athens State University in Athens, Alabama. During my long career, 
I've seen many major changes in the fire service. It has gone from being this simple, one-dimensional organization <clears throat> which concentrated on extinguishing the fire after it had started to putting more focus on how to prevent fires from occurring in the first place to also becoming a multi-dimensional emergency response agency with the responsibility of providing a broad range of services, both emergency and non-emergency, to the community. You know, we all have this idea of what the fire service is and what it does, but does the public actually understand the fire service? You know, we're no longer your old fire department. Everyone had, knows this popular image of the fire department where you've got this big red truck that's screaming down the road with the lights and the siren blaring, men hanging off every side of it. And we rush up to the burning house and we jump out and we put the water on the fire and we save the day. But is that really what the modern fire department is? Well, yes and no. We still do that, but there's so much more. Lowndes County Fire Rescue, like all modern departments, is a multifaceted organization in that our department is responsible for all types of emergencies. Our over 170 career and volunteer firefighters respond to some 3,000 calls each year. There are medical calls, fires, accidents, rescues, and most of these never make the headlines and you never hear about them unless you're the person there or the person maybe that lives next door. The fire department has become the one-stop shop for any and all types of incidents. If someone does not know what to do, does not know who to call, who do they call? The fire department. You'd be surprised at some of the things we get called to. We get called to somebody who can't get their water turned off, but we come. We get called to the cat in the tree, but we don't come. <laughs> If you've ever tried to get a cat out of a tree, you understand that. <laughs> but since fire is still our first name, that is what we're best known for. Lowndes County Fire Rescue responded to some 600 fires yes, last year in 2012. Not only structure fires, but in Lowndes County, wildfire is an ever-present danger. Being a rural area, the department responds to more wildfire than any other type of fire. Last year, we responded to some 300 wildfires. We have nine brush trucks in our department, along with our 18 engine companies that respond to these fires. We also have a great working relationship with Georgia Forestry. Not only does your fire department, and it is your fire department, handle fire calls, fire calls but we also respond to medical emergencies, rescue calls, hazardous materials incidents, uh, Lowndes County Fire Rescue, assist South Georgia EMS on all medical calls in the unincorporated part of the county. We provide the needed manpower, and we also provide immediate aid when EMS may be unavailable or may have a long response time. Since January 1st of this year, we have responded to over 100 rescue calls. And these rescue calls range from many numerous types of calls. Uh, of course, you're all familiar with the motor vehicle accidents where we go cut the people out of the car using the jaws of life. Everyone's seen this on television and the movies. This year, we've also responded to elevator rescues. We've had to remove people that were stuck in elevators. We've had a high angle rescue of a very severely injured man who was 40 feet in the air. And we had to bring him down safely to the ground so the paramedics could have give him aid. We've had a confined space rescue of a man who was trapped in a well when the walls of the well collapsed in on him. And we've had multiple water rescue incidents just in the last few weeks due to the flooding. We have two water rescue units that respond to numerous calls each and every year for those trapped and lost on our rivers and lakes. Our hazardous materials response team goes to spills and leaks of hazardous materials throughout the county. 
We contain them on site and mitigate the damage that they could be caused by their release into the environment. However, answering emergencies is not all the fire department does. There's still more to us. Fire prevention is now the major focus of the fire service. It's been shown preventing the fire is much more cost effective than extinguishing the fire and much more cost effective than the damage caused by the fire. We have a very active Fire Inspections and Investigation Bureau that goes along with this fire prevention. We inspect every business each and every year. Any new business that comes into the county before they're given their CO must be inspected by the fire department. Free fire inspections are also done each year on any business in the county. Fire, investi fire investigations after the fire has occurred must be done on every fire. We've got to know what caused the fire. Was it an accident? Was it not an accident? What was the specific cause? Where did it begin? This is data that helps us not only in prevention by determining what are the new causes of fires, what causes these fires, and what can we do to help prevent them, but also we catch the arsonists this way. Public education is another major focus of the fire service now. Every year, Lowndes County Fire Rescue will perform public education events. We have speaking events such as these, school events. We have booths and exhibits at health fairs, air shows, malls, your big box stores, and all other businesses in the county. Anytime we're invited, we come out. We provide on-site educational opportunities to businesses in this county. If your business needs fire extinguisher training, just give us a call. We'll come out and do a class just for you. We can talk to you about fire safety, fire drills, exit strategies, whatever you may need, your fire department is there to help you. Every year we speak to over 5,000 citizens on various fire safety topics, from smoke alarms, contacting emergency services, fire safety plans, fire extinguishers, classes, learn not to burn, and smoke alarms. We all know the importance of smoke alarms. We have a state grant program that we're involved in that each year we receive smoke alarms that we install free of charge to disadvantaged families. We not only provide the smoke alarm, but we actually come out and install it in your home. And this is nothing. This is something we do for the community. We also have a very active code enforcement division for the fire department. This division focuses on the enforcement of codes, ordinance, and zoning throughout the county. And it works very closely with the Lowndes Valdosta Inspection Department, Valdosta and Lowndes Zoning Departments, and the Georgia Forestry Commission. They respond to concerns from citizens that affect the quality of life within Lowndes County, such as overgrown lots, trash. Right now we do have a trash issue going on in the county. We're out since the new trash ordinance, we're out making sure that there are no trash on our highways and roads. Our officers are out every day searching for any, any trash and citing those who are responsible. There's been no uptick as yet, but that's only because of our diligence. With all that being said, I hope now you see today's fire service in a very different light. Not the fire service of the past, just being the big red truck and rushing down the street with the lights and sirens and the men hanging off the sides is anything, ba <clears throat> is anything bad, but we're more than that now. We're a complete organization that provides service to our customers, and our customers are you the citizens of Lowndes County. So at this point, I would like to take any questions any of you may have concerning the fire department and its operations. Questions? I always have a lot of questions. I know she does, too. <laughs> so you, you brought one of your assistants here with us. Can you tell us how the, or, how the fire department is organized and what the chain of command is and how the volunteers will fit in all of that? 
Okay. Uh, Lowndes County is what's known as a combination department. We have a volunteer staff and a paid staff. Uh, the paid staff, we have paid firefighters also, but just we'll speak of the staff to start with. Uh, I have a staff that consists of myself, uh, my training officer, Captain Green, is my chief inspector, and our fire marshal, uh, which is uh, Daryl Hall. Uh, Captain Carter is our training officer. Uh, we also have a code enforcement division, which also works as part of my primary staff, and there's four members of code enforcement. Now, the two sides of the department, the paid and the volunteer side, actually act as one. There's really not a division between the two sides. I don't, I tell people I don't have paid firefighters and volunteer firefighters, I only have firefighters. Each of them do an excellent job. Each of them do the job. The difference being, of course, the paid firefighters, this is their career, this is what they do for a living. The volunteer firefighters, on the other hand, they do this because of their love for the community, because of their, their wishes to give to the community. Now, organizationally, each district of the county has one, two, or three volunteer stations in it. Uh, each of those districts will have a district chief, and he will have officers under him. Uh, myself, as being the fire chief, I command all of the units within the county. Uh, in the county, we have some 56 uh, apparatus all total. There are 18 engine companies, nine rescue, no, nine rush companies. We have five rescue companies, various tankers, and other apparatus. Is that anything? Yes, sir. I'm afraid I'm also one of these people with lots of questions. Certainly. We'll start with the cigarette question first because that's going to be the easiest to answer. <laughs> yeah, I have no data on the, uh, the instance of cigarettes and fire causation. Uh, I do know from my career uh, that many, many fires are caused by cigarettes. And smoking in bed back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s was an ever-present problem. Now. But as far as hard data on those, I, I just don't have it off the top of my head. Now, as far as arson investigation, the fire service is primarily involved in what's known as cause and origin in fire investigations. When we investigate a fire, there's two things we have to determine. And those are those two things. We determine the cause of the fire. What caused it and where did it originate? Well, the first thing we always look at is where did it originate? Where did the fire start? Where the fire starts always gives you the clue of what caused the fire. So you, you follow the burn patterns down to the, the minuscule point of origin, and there you begin digging. And you determine, okay, this is what actually caused this fire, whether it was the cigarette, the candle, the stove left on, whatever the cause may be. Now, as far as criminal arson cases, those are investigated entirely either by the sheriff's department or the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Once we determine cause and origin, if we determine it to be suspicious in nature, at that point we turn the investigation over to arresting authorities. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Mutual aid is it's termed in the fire service, and we have mutual aid agreements with all of our continuous communities. Uh, the city of Valdosta, let's speak primarily between ourselves and the city of Valdosta being the two big players in the county. Uh, I have a great working relationship with the city. Uh, J.D. Rice is a personal friend of mine. Uh, as a matter of fact, he and I have lunch, we try to have lunch together once a month. 
Uh, we have a relationship that we've built up over the years. Uh, so on a department head relationship, it's very close. Now the department's mutual aid, what that actually is, because people have a, don't really understand what the term means. What it means is if we get to a fire and for some reason we need help that's beyond what we have, we call the city. If the city gets to a fire and for some reason it's beyond what they have, they call us to assist them with the response. First, the organization who has responsibility has to get on the scene and determine if that assistance is needed before anything can happen. But with our working relationship being so close, uh, we work very closely together and, and assist each other at every opportunity. Uh, Georgia Forestry is one of our partners in our wildfire programs. Uh, we help them in their uh, fire prevention programs. They help us in our fire prevention programs and we work together almost seamlessly. Uh, when we respond to wildfire calls, uh, they will immediately get on, they have our frequency in their radios, and they will get on the radios very quickly when we get on the scene, and we'll know, okay, what do you have? Do you need us to start your way? Sometimes even before, because they have the tower spotter, they can see off in the distance, that's a big fire, or maybe they've got the plane up in the air, and, and they've already scouted this fire and know what's there, and they'll call us and tell us what's going on, and tell us that they already have their resources en route. Yes. I have a follow up on mutual yes. aid. Um, but Mount County recently signed a mutual aid agreement with some county in South Carolina. That was the Sheriff's Department. That was the Sheriff's Department. Yes. What, what? Can you speculate about why would we have mutual aid with South Carolina? It, it's probably a training aid. That's what I would, that would just be a guess, but being so far apart, it was probably a training thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. The fire service is paid for by your taxes. We are your employees. Uh, just as the sheriff's department is your employees, the fire department is your employees. Uh, in particular, and, and you live in the west side area, so uh, for a fire response in your neighborhood, you would get, depending on specifically where you live, I'm going to just give some numbers, you get Station 9, Station 10, and Station 2 will be your primary response stations. But as far as cost, there is none, not to you. Yes, sir. Well, we do not do that at homes. We do that in businesses. Uh, we don't have actual authority to inspect homes, uh, but we do have authority to inspect businesses. And uh, so that's where we, we put our focus on. We do courtesy inspections of homes. If you would like an inspection, you can call and we will do a courtesy one. Uh, there's nothing legally binding. Uh, you know, we'd tell you, you know, hey, you need to put a fire extinguisher here maybe your fire extinguisher is out of date or you need to put up a smoke detector, another smoke detector. But these are all just courtesies, just for your benefit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll be, we'll be glad to. We actually have a very good simulator that we can bring out, and we put it up and actually put a fire in it, and, and you get an opportunity to actually put it out. So it's a... Uh, when you say it has to be like a business? Ma'am? Does it have to be a business? No, ma'am. If you've got a community center uh, that you would like to do this with or a church group, we'll be glad to come out. Thank you. Gretchen. John? Yes.
Well, in answer to that question, first of all, anytime we get a call, we have to re we're we're bound to respond. Uh, I know you see, as in your case, you were doing a prescribed burn. Somebody drives by, sees the fire, they don't know is it prescribed burn? Is is this man trying to fight this fire and it's out of control? I don't know. I want to help. I call the fire department. We come. The second side of that putting up a sign and saying, don't call the fire department. Uh, maybe the fire gets away from you and you've lost your cell phone in the brush while you're fighting the fire. You can't get to it and you're needing help. But there's a sign that says, don't call the fire department. Like I said, it, last year we had 600 fires. <laughs> uh, it's remembering any one of them uh, at my age is <laughs> Gretchen. First of all, smoke detector. That would be the number one thing. Uh, smoke detectors save more lives than anything you can do in your home. The second thing, going hand in hand with that, is a fire extinguisher and knowing how to use it. The fire extinguisher that sits underneath your sink, if you don't know how to operate it, don't know how to use it, does you little, if any, good. The third thing would be to have a fire evacuation plan. What are you going to do if you wake up in the night and there is smoke? Say your smoke detector is going off. It's two o'clock in the morning. You open your eyes and all you can see is the darkness of smoke around you. What do you do at this point in time? Anybody, what's your first thing that you do? Get out, Get out. but what's the first thing you do? Ah, oh, you drop to the ground, very good. Drop to the ground. You would be amazed at how many people will stand up. Don't stand up. In a house fire, at this level, right here, if you have a fully involved house fire, the temperature is between 11 and 1300 degrees. If you stand up in that atmosphere and take one breath, you will only take one breath. Roll out of that bed, find your exit, and move to the outside. But have a plan. Have everyone in the house alerted to that plan. Have a meeting place outside. Make sure everyone knows where to go. Don't try to save the house. Don't try to get Aunt Mamie's picture off the wall. Those are things that can be replaced. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe Aunt Mamie's gone, but certainly it's not worth losing your life over. But have that plan. Know how to get out. Have a place to meet the big oak tree in the front yard. The whole family meets there, everybody's there. You know you're all safe. Go to the neighbor's house and call 911. If you don't pick up your cell phone on the way, if you don't know where it is, can't pick it up, go. Then don't go back in. Don't try to stand inside and make that phone call. Have a plan. Those are the three major things you need to remember. Anyone else? Yes. gentleman right there. <laughs> I'll make sure you get his name and number before we leave. Uh, it's Captain Green, but you, he's in charge of our public education program, and he would be the one to contact, and he'll be glad to set those up for you. Mm -hmm. Are you in the, is your business in the city or in the county? Well, in that case, don't call him. <laughs> You'll need to call the city on that one. Who's public ed in the city? Is that? Uh, you can start with uh, John Hollander. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're responsible for that. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry. The lights got me. The ones we install free of charge are battery operated because we're not electricians. We're not going to get up in there and, and try to pull wire and, and do electrical work. That affords you a degree of safety. Yes, your greater degree of safety is with a hardwired extinguisher with a battery backup. Uh, and all of the new ones now have the battery backup systems to them. Uh, do you know what it means when your fire extinguisher starts to chirp about every two seconds? Anybody heard that before? A little chirp? Sounds like a bird in your house. There you go. Your battery needs to be replaced. Why don't you this year, we change time next week. We have a time change. On your time change this year, put your ladder up and get up there and change the battery in your smoke detector. And every year when the time changes, in the spring, get your ladder out, stand up there, change the battery in your smoke detector. It's a great time to do it. It's something that nobody remembers to do until it starts chirping at 3 o'clock in the morning and you can't find the battery and Walmart's not open or you don't want to drive there So, because Walmart's always open. But change that battery. Pick that date. That's, all, that's the best date to do it is when the time changes. So if you'll all do that this this next coming weekend, not this weekend, but next, isn't it? It's next weekend. Get up there and change that battery. Y'all will make y'all will make me happy. I don't know I've done something here today. Anything else? John, have you got your hand up again? <laughs> okay, very good question. Uh, the fire department is funded through your county taxes. Uh, since in the county we have a city fire department and a county fire department. There's, there's two different departments because they're two different entities. The people that live in the city can't pay for the county fire department. That's House Bill 3, three I can't remember the House Bill number. But there's a House Bill that says someone that lives in a city that pays for a service cannot pay for the same service in an unincorporated area. So we have to be funded through a, a special tax that is levied. Uh, primarily, we're, our funding comes from the uh, hospitality taxes that are in the county and a, a few others. So that's how we, we get our funding for operating expenses. Now, as far as capital expenses, those, of course, come from SPLOS funding. All of our equipment, all of our fire stations are built or purchased through SPLOS funding. So uh, we really like for the SPLOS to get passed because we need new fire trucks, to be honest with you. Uh, as, as you can imagine, with as many apparatus as we have in the county, um, by the time you filter through 50 some odd apparatus purchasing, it's a long time to get back to that beginning. And those fire apparatus get some age and some wear on them. Anything else? Yes, sir. Okay, that, that's not the fire department, that's actually the utilities. Okay. Uh, when when uh, uh, utilities are working on a water main somewhere they have to relieve the pressure in the in the water system and so they go to a hydrant that's on the same grid as the main they're working on to relieve the pressure and open that hydrant to, to 
drive the pressure down. Now, you will notice uh, in the city and in the county, uh, twice a year, we check every hydrant in the county. Uh, we have to flush the hydrant and flow test it annually and then come back and check, turn it on and check it again one other time. So right now the county is just starting. We, start, I, we started our uh, hydrant testing March the 1st, which was uh, Saturday, and uh, we'll be testing for the next two months. So if you live in the unincorporated area of the county and you see the fire department out there opening hydrants up and just letting your water run out, we're doing this for a reason. Uh, we have to test the pressures on the hydrants.